Hi everyone, and welcome to the first of three Maya tutorials on creating a solar system. The first one is going to be about creating our planets. Uh, the second one is going to be about their orbits. And the third one will be creating the asteroid belt and the particles that are used and possibly creating the sun. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we have everything clean when we start. So we're gonna go to file, project window, and we're gonna choose new. We're going to name our project Solar System. And we are going to change our location. In this case, I'm going to choose my desktop just to make sure that you can see everything where it is. You're going to most likely want to use your uh, jump drive or your documents folder. Now, this should work in both Windows and Mac, so you should be fine either way. So we're going to click Accept, come up to File, New Scene. Don't save the changes. And we're going to make sure that we're saving in the right place. So save as. Notice we are loading desktop to the solar system, scenes, and we're right where we belong. Now, for this case, uh, so that we can work in the lab, we're going to use a Maya ASCII so we can delete that ch tag that is put into all Maya 2013 files. Um, if you have any questions about that, just ask me. For now, we're going to call this uh, system start. And click save. All right, so our first process here is to create the planets. We're gonna to go to Create Polygon Primitives, and please note that the interactive creation is gonna be turned off for this exercise. Also make sure that you have it turned off for the NURBS primitives as well. So if you haven't done that, please make sure that the checks are off on those. And then after that, we can proceed with Create Polygon Primitives Sphere. And that'll create a sphere in the middle of our view. So we want to check right now we're in wireframe. If you'd like to set that up, you can hit five to see that shaded. Now we're going to open our outliner, which is right here on the side. Open that up so we can keep track. Notice we have our P sphere one. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this nine times. So we have a total of 10 spheres. So we're going to press command D. And there we have the 10. Now this is going to represent our sun and the planets. So go ahead and name those now by double clicking on them and then changing each one. Okay, so you notice that I filled these in over the quick pause. So you'll notice that all of these are currently stacked on top of each other, but they're all still there. And you're just gonna wanna make sure that you start moving them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the channel box and temporarily set them apart from each other so we could work with their size and work with their shape a little bit better. So we're gonna come over to the side here. We're gonna make sure that we are in the channel box, which is this upper right-hand corner. And you can see it should look like this. The attribute editor actually looks like this. So if you're in this, make sure you click the channel box and change over. So what we're gonna do for each one is we're just gonna space it out a little bit. This is not permanent because once we attach these to the orbits, they're gonna be where they belong. So we're gonna change each one in increments of five to move them apart. So we're gonna start with Mercury. We're gonna leave the sun, of course, at the center. And we're gonna translate this to five. And you can see we've shifted our sphere over. We're gonna do the same thing with the others going 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Now we could have done this by hand by simply just selecting one of the spheres, selecting the move tool to the side and holding down the X key and moving it over. And that works well, but you know, for the case of this, we're just gonna kind of move these temporarily. So it's just as easy and just as quick to introduce the translate function as well as the move tool at the same spot. So next thing we're gonna wanna do is set the scale for each planet. We're gonna wanna make sure that our planets are approximately to the size that they're going to be when they finish so we can get a sense 
of what they look like. Now I prefer to do this from the top view. So if you go to your panels, orthographic, and top, you'll see that our planets are now all lined up with the top view. Now this is orthographic, meaning that it doesn't have a perspective. Everything will be the same size regardless of depth. Now we can still adjust the scale, but depth wise, they're all gonna be the same. So the first one we're gonna do is select Mercury. We're gonna change the scale of all three to 0.3. We're gonna go to Mars. That's gonna be select all three again. And eight. Earth is going to be 0.9. Mars is going to be 0.4. Jupiter is going to be 10.2. Saturn is going to be 8.3. Uranus is going to be 3.3. Neptune is going to be 3.2. And Pluto, which I still consider a planet, is going to be 0.15. Now what you want to do is, if you want to, is you can actually spread these out a little bit more to make it easier for you to see what's going on. Again, we have the Move tool selected up here. And we can hold down the X key and just shift our planets over just so we can get a sense again of getting them out of the way of each other again this is only temporary while we work with uh, the rest of the planets before we get our orbits now you can actually marquee select over a large group if you want to and move them in pairs okay so we can take our saturn again holding down the x key Oops, sorry move that here we can take jupiter move that over a little bit and like I said, well, we're not looking for miracles here. We're just looking for a way to clean it up so we can see it a little bit better Oops. when we get to working on it, okay? Next thing we're gonna wanna do is create the ring of Saturn. So Saturn being here, again, I move these a little bit more to the side just to get them out of the way. Make sure that we have plenty of room for our ring that over there okay so what you're going to want to do for the ring is you're going to go to create herbs primitives and here I'm going to go with a Taurus slide that over to line up with Saturn and here I'm going to use the scale feature clicking in the yellow middle and I'm going to scale it up it's just peeking out so that I know where we're at and get a sense of where it is in comparison if you want to you can actually go to Saturn notice that it is the 8.3 click on its ring change this to 8.3 to be a little more precise with the Taurus but again we're going to change that here in a moment anyway so now that we're here we're going to make sure we select the ring we've moved it over the top all right we want to move back to our perspective so we can get a sense of the depth that we're going to want for the ring. Now, for this step, what we're going to do is we're going to grab only the green handle, and we're going to keep an eye on our scale. So for this, I'm going to grab the green, and I'm going to shrink it down to, uh, let's say, about 0.25, or oh. 0.025 to get a nice clean ring set that up now the problem with this is as you can see is the ring is currently running into Saturn so we want to make sure that we can clean that up a little bit so what we're gonna do is in the attribute editor open that up here remember if it's not there you can click here all right I want you to click on the make nerves Taurus and move down to the radius and change this to 1.5, which will make it much larger, and a height ratio of 0.25.
and that will set us up a nice ring with a nice distance off of the planet as you can see there okay don't forget when you're moving all of these that you're going to want to keep an eye on pluto pluto being the smallest out there is very easy to lose track of <laughs> 